Today, I'm gonna show you exactly how I make a stinger transition from start to finish. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day. So as you guys know, I release a lot of templates on this channel where you can just go down in the description, download a template, change some colors, add in your logo, and you've got brand new stream overlays and stream graphics to put into your stream. But a lot of people on every single one of those videos comments, can you please do more tutorial based stuff? I love the templates, but I'd love to see how to make stuff like that. So in today's video, there is no template, just a blank After Effects project. I'm going to show you the exact steps I take from start to finish of how I design and animate a stinger transition if I was going to be releasing a template on this channel. But before we get into it, I just wanted to say that I do try to stream every Tuesday and Sunday over on twitch.tv forward slash gravitym. So make sure you're dropping over there and dropping a follow, maybe catching a live stream if you're interested. But without further ado, let's get into the start to finish transition tutorial. All right, guys, so here we are inside of After Effects. It is a completely blank After Effects project. I just opened it up and all I've done is imported a fake logo. This is normally how I would start if I was doing a template because I want it to be a fake logo, but you can just bring in your normal logo and this is all we need. We're gonna start from here and what you wanna do first is create a new composition. All these settings here are good, 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second, and now it's time to get into creating the stinger. So I have a rough idea of what I wanna do, but honestly, not much. You'll see how I just kinda mess around with stuff until it works. So we're going to jump up here into the layer tab. We're going to create a solid. What color do we want our stinger to be? Let's do like a, a teal like this. Looks good. Just like that. Cool. So now it's time to animate the stinger coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and lengthen this up because it makes it a little bit easier to work with. And I'm going to move it off to the side and go ahead and zoom in on my uh, timeline down here. So we're going to go ahead and hit this drop down here into the transform tools and we're going to start keyframing our solid to come in. So we want to keyframe the position by hitting the stopwatch. We want to come forward maybe like, I'm going to go 50 frames and we're going to go ahead and turn on our uh, title and action safe by hitting this right here and it's just kind of some guidelines to show you when you're getting close to the middle and the sides and whatnot and we're just going to drag this in and we're going to kind of line it up in the middle i'm going to use like these little crosshairs in the middle i think i just absolutely nailed it oh my god i did i just absolutely nailed it first try so right in the center beautiful Go ahead and fit. There we go. And now we've got this keyframe of it coming in. You'll notice it's pretty slow and boring. And we're going to work on that right now. So we're going to select these two keyframes with drawing a box around them like that. We're going to right click. We're going to go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. We're going to make sure we select them again. And we're going to go up to our graph editor here. If your graph editor doesn't look like this, just right click and make sure you go to edit speed graph. You might be on value graph or something like that. Make sure you're on speed graph and you'll see this little archway. We're just going to click on the archway down here and we're going to grab this little arm and we're going to go in drag it just like that to make this kind of shape so now we've got a much more dynamic move so now you'll see it speeds in and then comes to a stop more gently like that that is a really good looking animation right there so that is looking pretty good so now what we're going to do is we're just going to right click on our layer and we're going to hit pre-compose and i'm going to go to move all attributes to a new composition not leave all we're going to go move all and i'm going to hit okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this animation i'm going to duplicate it by hitting command d or control d on your keyboard and i'm going to go ahead and apply the flip flop command you see i've already searched it right here so if you type flip we're gonna apply flip flop to this one and now you can see it comes in from the other side and now we've got it perfectly closing just like that now that already looks really cool and really clean you can see there's a bit of a lag at the beginning that's just after effects being weird if we drag these forward so they're not right at the beginning you can get rid of that lag so now you see it's a nice smooth smooth look just like that and now i've got a bit of an idea of what i want to do here for the stinger so i didn't have this idea when i started but i do think this would be cool so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to duplicate like this one here we're going to move it to the top and i'm going to go ahead and apply the fill effect and what the fill effect will do to this is it'll allow me to change the color of it now that i've already created a solid so we're going to make this like a bit of a darker blue maybe like that which could be cool and now we're going to mess around with some rotation and whatnot so we're going to rotate this 90 degrees to where it's up at the top like that and then we're going to mess with the scale to bring it like this so now it's going to be coming from the top into the center just like that as you can see that's pretty cool just like that so what we can do is we can now duplicate that and go ahead and uh flip this to negative 90 degrees and it'll put one at the bottom as well so now we've got it closing in just like that i think these dark blues should go underneath the uh teal so we're gonna go ahead and grab these dark blue layers and drop them just like that i'm calling it dark blue but it's really light blue and we might want to have these uh light blue layers maybe start a bit sooner than the teal and have the teal come in later so the dark blue or the light blue 
comes in and then the teal comes in after it. So I think that looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and move this forward so there's no lag. And that looks kind of cool. Maybe the teal comes in a bit later. Whoopsie. There we go. Teal comes in a little bit later maybe. That's actually pretty cool right there. So just like that. So now that we've got our kind of animation of closing off to where we don't see our uh, stream anymore and it's just all graphic when we can actually make our cut point, it's time to bring in the logo. So we're gonna go back to our project here. We're gonna drop in our fake logo here, but obviously this will be your normal logo. So just like that, let's go ahead and make this quality. Um, let's go half quality. So there we go, we've got our logo brought in. This is kind of where I would want it to be for the animation. So I think the logo animation should start kind of like right here. So we're just going to drop down the fake logo, go into the transform tools, and we're going to go ahead and mark a keyframe for scale here, and then move forward to when we want the scale to end, maybe like that, and go ahead and mark another keyframe there. So this is where we want it to end, so we're going to go back to the beginning, and we're going to set our scale to zero. So now our logo scales in just like that. That's a little quick, especially because we're once again going to select these, right click, and click on Easy Ease, Keyframe Assistant, and then Easy Ease. And then we're going to go back into our graph editor and we're going to do the kind of similar shape, pull this one forward so it starts fast and then smooths out. So just like that. So let's go ahead and play this all together. So that's looking pretty cool, but I kind of want to add a bit of a rotation to the logo as well. So we're going to go to where it ends and we're going to go ahead and put a keyframe because that's where we want our rotation to stop. And then we're going to go to where the animation begins and we're just going to throw a rotation around just like that. And you're going to see that it's going to rotate now as it comes in just like that. So we're going to go ahead and once again select these keyframes, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then go into the graph editor, do a similar. You see it's upside down now, but that's fine. We're just going to do a bit of a similar shape just like that. So now we've got our rotation going wah. So as you see, the logo goes like whoosh, and comes in all cleanly. It's not just a normal scale. I think that looks pretty cool just like that. Yeah, that looks awesome. So now what we're going to do is we need to make our composition split down the middle and show our stream again. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take all this and we're just going to go ahead and pre-compose it again. We're going to call this finished animation. So there we go, we got our finished animation pre-comp, and now we just need to cut this in half so that it will open up. And the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna make sure we have finished animation selected down here. We're gonna come up to our masking tools and we're gonna select the rectangle tool, and we're just gonna draw a rectangle just like this. If you're a little bit over center, then that is fine, just so that there's no crease in the middle when you duplicate it. So make sure you're a little bit over the center, just like that, as you can see. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and animate our mask. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure when our stinger comes in, we have plenty of time to see the logo, and then we want it to open up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mask path right here, we're just gonna keyframe it, we're gonna have it move forward, and then we're gonna open up our mask path just like that. So there we go. So now you can see it goes whoop, perfect. And now we're gonna do the same thing once again. I love doing the keyframe interpolation. So we're gonna keyframe assistant, easy ease, back on the graph editor. And once again, we are going to do a shape, but we're gonna do our shape backwards this time. So we're gonna drag this side in. So it starts slow and then speeds up as it goes out. So it's like wah. And now I think that's a little bit fast now that we've added the interpolation. So we're just gonna go and move them out like that. And now we've got a much slower looking animation. I still think that's a little fast. There we go, that's a nice slow speed there. So that is looking really good. So the way we're gonna now add the other side to it is we're just gonna duplicate by hitting Control or Command D. And then in one of the mass settings here, we are gonna go ahead and hit subtract under this little drop down instead of add hit subtract so you see we've now got the other side but we need to take off our mass keyframes here so we're gonna go ahead and hit the stopwatch to take off the keyframes and then we're gonna add in some new ones and we're gonna go ahead and match them up with this first one so we can hit the drop down there so we can see these little dots to line them up we're gonna move forward and right there we're gonna add another keyframe and then what we're gonna do is we're now going to drag this mask by just selecting these two out this way just like that. So now we've got it closing, but now you see this side's much slower and weird. That's because we need to now do the keyframe interpolation. So select keyframe assistant, easy ease. Go ahead and enter our graph editor. Remember we drug this side forward. So it starts slow now and then ends quick. And there we go. We've now got it opening up from the center just like that. So now we can play our full stinger transition. We can play our full stinger transition. 
and that is looking really cool. So now we can just add our in and out points by hitting B for the end point. So we just wanna put that to the beginning and then N for the end point. So once it opens up, hit the end point, N for the end point, and now we can just watch it over and over on loop. We'll hit fit it to the screen and there you go. There is a really awesome stinger transition. So this is really what I do when I'm creating templates for you guys. I just kind of mess around until we get something that looks awesome like this. So if you want to create a stinger transition for yourself, you can see it's super easy. I don't want you to just take what I just did and do it click for click and do this exact same thing because that's no better than just having a template. But now that you can see how to animate in solids, that is all it is. You can now take this and you can create your own animations that would look even better. But when it's time to export your animation, now that we've got the in and out points set, that. What we want to do is we want to go up here to composition, go to add to render queue, and now we've got comp one here in our render queue. You just want to click on lossless in blue here, and we're just going to change the format from AVI to QuickTime. And then once we change it to QuickTime, we want to change channels from RGB to RGB plus alpha. The alpha channel will give you the background that is transparent so that it can go over your footage whenever you are doing a stream stinger transition. So there we go. We're going to hit OK. And then where it says output to not specified yet in blue, you just want to click on that. And that's when you can name it whatever you want, save it wherever you want. And then you just want to hit render over here, this button that's grayed out for me because I haven't changed the output to settings. But that is pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoy making stinger transitions it is by far my favorite thing to make when it comes to stream graphics i love making them and as you can see we did that super quickly it is very easy to make brand new stinger transitions for your stream and i hope you guys enjoy doing it once again i do try to stream every tuesday and sunday over on twitch.tv forward slash gravity m so make sure you drop over there and drop a follow and maybe catch a live stream but i'll see you guys in the next video